going to talk, talk about the wheat and the tans. The wheat and the tans. The wheat and the tans. The parable of the tans is a powerful parable. It is a parable that is authored by Jesus Christ himself. It is a perplexing and yet an enlightening parable. Jesus used this parable to communicate a deeper truth of the kingdom of God. Parables allow Jesus to put the mystery of, of God's message in small truth pieces so that those who believe could grasp God's revelations. In other words, a parable is a short story that contains a divine message or a heavenly truth and this parable has been offered so that people like you and me can pick up on the meaning and hide that meaning in our hearts that we may not sin against Almighty God. The Gospel of Matthew is the first writing of the canonized synoptic Gospels. The Gospel of Mark consists of the author's attempt to proclaim the gospel message of Jesus Christ as Messiah. That is the gospel of Mark. The gospel of Luke attempts to talk about Jesus' life from a historical perspective. Then the gospel of John seeks to help each reader to understand that you must believe in Jesus Christ if you're going to experience eternal life. When we look at the gospel of Matthew, we note that the Gospel of Matthew is about the kingdom of God. It is about the kingdom of God. You want to read this, this Gospel, and as you read it, remember that it is teaching you about the kingdom of God. And as we look at this simile, as we look at the writing of the author regarding the parable of the tares, we note that in this parable, we see a glimpse of the kingdom of God. Jesus was present and at the beginning of the kingdom of God when he came into the world and he revealed the kingdom of God to us not only by his presence but also by what he taught and by how he lived. And as we live in the world today we need to be mindful my friends that we don't just represent Mount Moriah Church nor do we just represent ourselves. We represent Jesus, the kingdom of God. And we must always remember that our connection is not just a localized connection, but it is an eternal connection. For those of us who profess that we are children of God, those of us who testify that we are saved and baptized full of the Holy Spirit, those of us who proclaim that we are the, among the redeemed of the Lord, we must remember our connection and it's not just a connection here among human beings, but it is a connection with Jesus Christ and ultimately to the kingdom of Almighty God. Those of us who are saved, we are citizens of the kingdom of Almighty God. So as we live every day of our lives, we must be mindful that we are members of a greater kingdom. We're not just citizens of the United States of America. We're not just a part of a human a race or human beings but we are a part of the kingdom of God of the kingdom of God and when we think about the gospel of Matthew we we study about the king and his kingdom for he is the one that makes all the difference in the world as reflected in the text this morning we see uh, that there is an opposition to the kingdom of God that's partly what this text is all about. It's about the opposition to the kingdom of God. In other words, uh, those of us who know the Lord and we've been saved by the grace of God, we know about the kingdom of God. We are members of the kingdom of God. We're part of the citizenship of the kingdom of God. But there is someone who doesn't care anything about the kingdom of God. And we call him Satan. Some call him Hades. Some call him the devil. Call him what you will we do know that he is in opposite direction to the kingdom of God. And as we look at this text, we see how uh, he works in opposition to that which is good, to that which comes from the hand of God. Satan attempts to undermine the presence of God's kingdom on earth by planting tares 
in the places where God plants wheat. In other words, God plants believers just like you and me. And every time God plants a believer, the devil plants a tear. Amen, somebody. Have you, ever, have you ever thought to yourself it would be wonderful if we didn't have all this negativism and all of this stuff going on all the time? Wouldn't it be wonderful if the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ could do the Lord's work without any antagonism? But I want you to know that we learned from this text today that they too uh, exist together, the good and the bad, the tear and the wheat, the right and the wrong, the, the Satan and God all exist together. There is not one without the other. And my friends, as we live every day, we got to be mindful that we have been placed in a situation where we have God as our ally, God as our father, God as our king, God as our savior. We also have Satan, the one who's trying to stop us from doing what we're doing. Amen. We can't be so weak until we let the devil influence us to go against the kingdom of God. We must seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these other things will be added unto us. But it's all about the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. Not about you, not about me. It's about the kingdom. Not about your position or my position, but it's about the kingdom. It's not about what you have or what I have. Not about the money in your pocket. Not about the house you live in or the car that you drive. It is about the kingdom of God. Sometimes I wonder if believers today in America have forgotten about the fact that we are connected with the kingdom of God. We have a, a connection with a God that will live forever. A God whose kingdom is yet to come. Yet his will shall be done. A God whose kingdom exists now and exists in the future. A God whose kingdom belongs to him. And those of us who are citizens of the kingdom we must have allegiance to the king of the kingdom. But we cannot live in his kingdom and have ours at the same time. We cannot live according to his will and live according to ours at the same time. Notice, if you will, that, 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 that the master planted wheat. And notice that the enemy came and planted tares. Am I right about it? A tear is an injurious weed resembling wheat. It looks much like wheat, but it's not wheat. I guess you could say it is a counterfeit of the real thing. Therefore, it may well be a conclusion that tares in the kingdom are those who look like Christians, but are not. Those who walk like Christians, but are not. Those who talk like Christians, but are not. Those who sing like Christians, but are not Christians. Those who pretend to be what they are not. They are counterfeit Christians, I tell you. Those who go to church every Sunday morning, those who may even go to Bible study, those who sometimes may frequent prayer meeting, but in their heart they are not really devoted to God. It's a difference between being religious and being Christian. For you can be Christian and carry out different kind of religious fundamentals, but yet as a Christian, you practice what you preach. People who are religious talk about what is holy but they don't live what is holy people who are who are who are religious are people who carry out ceremonies in other words they worship god but they don't love god they talk about god but they don't live for god they love to brag about what god is doing in their life but they don't talk about what they are doing for god oh my friend there are a lot of religious people around people who love to go to church but the church is not in them people who love god but god is not in them them those who talk about God, but they don't witness God as their personal savior. My friend, as we live every day, we got to come to the fact of understanding that God we serve is a God with all power in his hands. He has all power. He has all power. He has all power. He can change one's heart from a heart of the world to a heart of heaven. He can change one's heart to a heart of heaven, a heart from a heart of disbelief in the savior. One that lives must live in Christ so that he can die in Christ. If you live in Christ, you will die in Christ. But if you live in Satan, you will die in Satan. My friends, we got to come to the place of realizing that the purpose that we live for is the purpose to be fruitful. To make sure that we are who we say we are. And we must not live lives of counterfeit. We must live lives of true belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I don't know if you've ever seen a counterfeit dollar bill or not. Has anybody ever seen a counterfeit dollar bill? Some of y'all have. You. And it looks real, doesn't it? It looks like the real thing. You look at it, it got the little eye and it got, it got everything you want. But it's not real. And, and only those who have the eye for it will know the difference. And I thought would know the difference. And so what we got to understand is that as Christians, when we live counterfeit lives, there is one who can tell that we're phonies. Now, I may look at you and somebody else might look at you. We might think you're the real thing. But there is one who has an eye for a counterfeit. And he knows if you're who you say you are or not. He knows if you're real. He knows if you mean what you say and say what you mean. He knows. For he has an eye to identify the counterfeit Christian. And my friends, I want to encourage all of us today that as we leave from this place, that we will make up in our minds that we are real for the Lord. We are real for, we're going to worship him from the depths of our hearts. That we're going to live for him as we obey his holy word. That we're going to walk in him as we seek to live as servants of his. For my friends, we are the people of God. And the people of God uh, people of God worship the king. We don't worship our cars and our money. We worship the king. Yeah. Amen, somebody. We don't worship friends. We worship the king. Yeah. For it's all about the king. Yeah. And in the Gospel of Matthew, we learn about the kingdom of God. Hallelujah, somebody. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field assembly in comparison comparing the kingdom of God to a man that sowed seed in the field and so we see my friends that Jesus it continuously gives us a bird's eye view of what the kingdom is all about and I still say I said in the Bible study I still say I wish God had just made it real simple I wish he had just told us exactly what it was all about I really would I do I do I do I do it would have been so much easier, but you got to get a little piece over here in the Bible, a little piece over there, a little piece back there, a little piece up, up front, and you get a little bit of the kingdom of God as you study and read the word of God. You have to put all of that together to make sense out of the kingdom of God. Amen. Some people, some people try to tr create their own kingdom. They aren't concerned about the kingdom of God. They're cr trying to create their own kingdom. They try to get a whole lot of friends. And they try to have a whole lot of influence and they try to make sure that they're able to gain the many into their corner of life. But my friends, we don't have a kingdom. God has the kingdom. We are the servants of God and we are to worship him. We are to serve him. We are to live for him. For he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright in that morning star. He is the wheel in the middle of a wheel. He is the joy of our salvation. He is our everything. And as we live every day, we live for the Lord. We live for the Lord because in him we live and we have our being. My friends, many of us today are going out of our minds and biting our fingernails off because we find ourselves living amidst the forces of evil that continue to complicate our lives as we seek to fulfill the plan of God in the world, which leaves us aggravated and disheartened. Leaves us aggravated and disheartened. What are you talking about, preacher? So many people have quit serving in the church of God because they're aggravated and disheartened. The more they try to do for the Lord, the more you have these tears rising up, discouraging them and causing them to feel at heart like it's not worth it. My friends, we got to remember that the tears are with us until a change come in this world. Yeah. Amen. Notice in the text it says that, that when, when the servant said, do you want us to go and dig out the tears? Because sometimes when you go trying to judge people and dig out those we think are not what they ought to be, when you dig, you dig up some good ones too. Amen, somebody. So he said, now don't, don't go about trying to judge and dig. You just leave that to me. You just, you just leave that when it comes down to the end of our journey. You just leave it to me because I know what is tail and I know what is wheat. I'm the best one to make that judgment. So he said, let, let the wheat and the tail grow together. Those of you who lived on a farm or at least maybe had a garden, you know when you go out there and plant that coin? 
when the coin come up, what comes up? Weeds. Weeds come up too. That's, that's somewhat of a comparison of this text. As God is seeking to raise believers, he's seeking to raise servants to serve and to do his will. Satan is also raising tares. Amen, somebody. So don't be surprised when everything you try to do that's good, evil is always present. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. In fact, you ought to expect it because that's the way it is. If you're doing anything for the Lord and, and no one is bothering you, the devil is not at you, and you don't have that negativism behind you, it may be that you're not doing what you think you're doing. Some people don't know that they're living more for the devil than they are for God. And if you're living for the devil, nobody's going to be concerned about you. It's when you start living for God is when you really start having problems. Amen, somebody. And somebody can't stand, some people can't stand to see other people do what God wants them to do. They can't stand it, particularly when they are not doing what they ought to do. I learned a long time ago when people are not doing what they should do, they don't want you to do what you do. Amen. You don't believe let somebody come in the church and start really working in the church and people who've been in the church hadn't been doing what they should have been doing. The first thing they start doing is criticizing that person. And they'll criticize them until they quit doing what they're doing and then they'll leave them alone. Wheat and tear growing together. Wheat and tear going together. Now one thing about this this tear is that this tear looks exactly like wheat. But the difference between a wheat and a tear is when you take the tear, the wheat rather, into the grinder, it makes flour. But when you take the tear, it doesn't make anything. <laughs> it doesn't make anything. It doesn't make anything. It, make it. it looks like wheat. It may even feel like wheat. But it's not wheat. It's a counterfeit. It looks like one thing, but it's really something else. And my friends, we got to be mindful of the fact that, that these forces of evil are with us until we leave this world. It is not until Jesus comes and set up the kingdom that we will arrest ourselves from these evil forces of life. You go look in Ephesians and tell you about, it'll tell you about, it'll tell you about how it is that there are evil forces all around us. And as we live every day, we got to deal with these evil forces. Got to put on the whole armor of God and we'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and having done all to stand. But the devil is here to stay. He's here to stay and long as we're in life as we are now, the devil is right here with us. He'll mess with your mind. He'll mess with your mind. He'll have you thinking that no one cares anything about you. He'll have you thinking that people looking at you and talking to somebody, you have you thinking they're talking about you devil will mess with your mind because the devil got sense enough to know if he can get your mind he got you too so we can't let the devil have our mind we got to give God our mind we have to allow this thing that that God does for us we got to allow it to live in our souls and to live in our hearts Paul said let the same mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus Amen, somebody. We got to learn how to live according to the plan of Almighty God. And if we live according to God's plan, God will make a way somehow. I know he will. I believe that he will. This evil force is all around. This evil force gets into our homes. It gets into our home. It gets into your children. Am I right about it? It gets into the children. Call them to go acting all kind of ways. To become disobedient when they've been obedient to you. Start smelling themselves when they get up around 13 years old. Start thinking they know more than the parents know. Get where you can't tell them anything. They know everything. You don't know any young people like that, do you? Y'all know any grandchildren like that? Amen. The devil just has a way of getting into our home. Sometimes he gets in the husband. Sometimes he gets in the wife. Amen, somebody. And we got to be, beware of Satan. For he's planting tares everywhere. Amen. Amen. In your life, on your job, in your community, next door neighbor, he's planting tares everywhere. In other words, Satan is doing his job. You know what? If believers would stay on that job, we would stay on our job like Satan stays on heels. You know what? We turn the world upside down, wouldn't we? When we sleep, you know what? The devil is working. When we sleep, the devil is working. He's working. Out of the plan of God, he's working. He's working in our home to destroy our homes. And many times we have to be careful. Not only do we find tares in the home working against the home, but we find tares outside of the home working against the home. Am I right about it? 
I shared this morning with the 8 o'clock worshipers that it's awful strange to me that the government has it set up so that a family can't get assistance with the father in the home. That make any sense to you? Father has to leave home before his wife and children can eat. Why not feed the husband, the wife, and the children and help the husband to get some kind of skill so he can get a job and begin to take care of his own family? Amen, somebody. Sometimes it make you wonder whether there is a conspiracy going on somewhere. Amen, somebody. If you want to keep strong a strong family, if you want to keep a strong community, if you want to keep a strong society, you've got to keep family together. You got to keep fathers in that home. Got to keep wives in that home, children in that home. If the home is going to be what the home needs to be. My family, that, my friends, that evil force is all around. Seeking to conquer, divide and conquer. Keeping to, seeking to bring forth a, a, a division among those who love God. My friends, we got to remember that the devil is alive and doing well. Not only that, but we got to also realize that these forces of evil affect the church too. Affect the church too. The only way the devil can get in the church or either in, or in our home is that somebody got to bring him in. He just doesn't, sit, he just doesn't show up anyhow. He just doesn't show up any time he gets ready. He shows up in somebody. He shows up in somebody. And sometimes when people go against the grain of what family life is all about, the devil has shown up. The devil has shown up. When people start cussing each other out in the family, the devil has shown up. When people start thinking about themselves and not thinking about everybody else in the family, the devil has shown up. When there are people in the family who think only of their own way and not about the concern of the whole family, the devil, the devil has shown up. And we got to come to a place of understanding that the devil gets in the church too. Amen. He gets in the church. Look, look, if you will, look all around. See, the splitting of these churches. Folk can't get along with each other. Splitting up the church. Dividing the church. You got little bitty churches all over the place. Little small congregations all over the place. And they, they, they're not enough of them do themselves any good and they can't help anybody else. They just coming on Sunday morning saying hallelujah, praise the Lord and going back home. Can't do anything else. Amen. We got all this fragmentation. We're stronger together than we are apart. We have more power together than we do apart. But oftentimes in a church, somebody, somebody want to want to have a position of authority, can't get one, they go to another church and get one. Amen. Some assistant pastor can't, can't be the pastor, so he goes out and start his own church. Amen. All this division going on. Y'all looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about, talk back to me. Amen, somebody. We have division in the house of God because in the house of God, we have tares. And these tares are kind of fit. They look like Christian, but they're not Christian. They look like the real thing, but they're not the real thing. Oh, my friends, in the church of God, and there were a time that we need to rise up and be the children of God. The time is right now. Amen. Amen. We need to be who we say we are. Amen. If you're a child of God, you ought to live like a child of God. You ought to act like a child of God. You ought to walk like a child of God. You ought to talk like a child of God. You ought to be a child of God. There ever were a time for us to be real about who we are. The time is right now. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Amen. It was, was Mahatma Gandhi that said, I love your Jesus, but I don't love your Christians. Because they say one thing and do another. Yeah. Amen, somebody. They look like one thing, but they really are something else. What he was saying is that we're not real. Like we ought to be real. I'm not saying that there's no one that is real. I'm saying there's too many of us that's not real. And we need to be sincere about our walk with the Lord. Amen. We've been sincere in the fact that we seek to live according to the word of God. According to the word of God, we live according to the word of God. Because it is by the word of God that we're able to live according to his holy word. My friend, there are forces of evil all around us. Forces of evil all around us. These evil will make you... Think you're right when you're wrong. Amen, somebody. I could go into that. And I'll, I'll be too long if I go into that. <laughs> Amen. Make you think you're right when you're wrong. Sometimes people are so busy trying to judge and watch other people, they don't know what a mess their own life is in. Amen, somebody. Praise the Lord. Tears, tears, tears. 
look like one thing, but in reality, certainly may be something else altogether. This text is a very fine text, for this text lets us know that the wheat and tear must grow together. The right and the wrong must grow together. Amen. Now, it's all right for the right and wrong to grow together, because that's what the Bible says, right? But it's not good when a tear, when a wheat is trying to support a tear being wrong. Did you get that? Did you get that? Did you get that? When a wheat is supporting a tear being wrong, we ought to tell a tear, look, you need to come over here and get right with God, and you need to do it right now. Amen. Amen. Trying to support a tear when the tear is not right. When the tear is trying to live according to his or her own whim and her own agenda instead of living by the agenda of God, and then you have a wheat that's supporting a tear being wrong. You know anybody like that? Nobody like that. In other words, those of us who are we, those of us who are children of God, we need to stand for what God stands for. I don't care if it affect our own family members. I don't care if it affect our own friends. We got to stand for what is right according to the word of the living God. Am I right about it? Hallelujah, somebody. We need, we need to stand and know that God is still on the throne. Look at what he says in verse number 30. He said, let both grow together until the harvest and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn in other words gather the wheat that they might come and live with me in heaven that they might come live with me in heaven now which one do you want to be do you want to be a tear or do you want to be wheat which one do you want to be? And I hope and pray that you'll make up in your mind this morning as we worship God together what you're going to be. What you're going to be. Now, you can't be one thing Monday and something else on Sunday. You got you to be the same thing every day. Amen, somebody. I'm told, I'm told in one church there was this man who always came to church on Sunday morning and always hugging people, kissing people, and had candy in his pocket to give to the children always get, be saying a kind word to the elderly but at home he was he was he was <laughs> he was what he was at home amen somebody said he was a wife beater somebody said he didn't support his family financially like he should somebody said he didn't make any effort to try to help rear the children he was his own man doing his own thing amen somebody but when he got to church on Sunday morning got on his white shirt Got on a nice suit, his shiny shoes. He got to church. He was the perfect Christian, hugging everybody. See anybody coming in a wheelchair, he wanted to help them get in. Amen. Somebody saw somebody limping. He wanted to hold them up so they could get to where they wanted to go. In other words, you can't be one thing here and something else out there. You got to be the same thing in here and out there because that's what it's all about. You know what? A tear, a tear can only fake it so long because the tear is a kind of fit in the first place. Amen. A counterfeit bill might go from here to California, but one day somebody is going to discover that it is a counterfeit. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. So the wheat and the tear grow together. So how shall we as believers cope with the evil as we strive to do God's will? How shall we cope with the evil as we strive to do God's will? Now we know that the wheat and tear together but even though they are there together, we still, as believers, as we have a responsibility to do what? To live out God's plan in our lives. I don't care how bad the devil gets, God has promised us that he'll be with us and that he'll help us to live this life. We can't live it on our own strength, of course. We need the power of God to give us the strength we need that we can be wheat in the midst of tear that we can do right in the midst of wrong, that we can stand strong when others are weak and don't know what to do. We need to know that God is with us and that God is strengthening us. So my friends, uh, how shall we as believers cope with evil as we strive to do God's will? First of all, I believe that, that we've got to be aware of the presence of evil at all times. I believe that we've got to be aware of the presence of evil at all times. And you know what? Evil will come at you all kind of ways. Sometime in the very best friend that you have. Evil will come at you in all kind of ways. You got to be aware. And sometimes evil can slip in and you don't even know it's evil. You don't even know that it's not of God. 
Sometimes evil can just creep in and, and you're fully unaware that the devil is taking his place. You remember that song that said, whatever you do, don't, don't let the devil ride. Don't let him ride, because if you let him ride, he'll want to drive. You heard about that? And if you ever let him get in your automobile, he'll drive. Before it's over, he'll be at the steering wheel. You'll be in the back, in the, in the back seat. He'll be driving you. So you got to keep him out of the front seat. In fact, keep him out of your car altogether so that you can be able to do what God would have you to do. You will be known by the fruit that you bear. If you really want to be a child of God, then bear your fruit and live the fruit that you bear. Be the person that God has called you to be so that you can live for Almighty God. Stay alert. Stay aware because the presence of evil is all around. And because evil is all around, we need to keep our hand in God's hand. Amen. So God can help us to discern what is evil and what is good, what is right and what is wrong. God is able, I tell you, to make everything all right. We've got to be aware of the presence of evil. We've got to realize, my friends, that evil is all around. And we've got to know when evil has crept into our lives, has crept into our homes, has crept into the church. We've got to know when evil is all around us. My friend, we've got to be aware of the presence of evil. Amen. And then secondly, we're going to cope with evil as we strive to do God's will. We must be true to God's purpose for us. We must be true to God's purpose for us. For God is working in the world through people like you and me, believers in Jesus Christ, to make his presence known in the world. And one of the ways that we're able to defeat tares is by living strong for God. You don't defeat a tear trying to be like a tear. You defeat a tear by being more and more like Christ. By seeking to live your life according to God's plan for your life. And so many times in our lives, we, live, we look more like the world than we look like Jesus. Amen. We look more like the world than we look like Jesus. Amen. The world take a snip, we take a snip. world take a puff, we take a puff. We'll take a sniff, we take a sniff. We want to look just like the world. Whatever new style come out, whether it's clothes, hair, whatever, we want to be just like that. We're not looking at what's best for us in light of who we are as a child of God. Amen, somebody. Now, some styles, people just, some people just don't need to wear. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now, you look at that little skinny woman on television. And you go look and see what you look like before you try to put on what that little skinny woman got on. Amen, somebody. In other words, we got to understand who we are. We are not the world. We don't do everything that the world does. We seek to do what Jesus says that we ought to do. We seek to live according to God's plan for our lives. My friend, we must be true to God's purpose for us. For he wants us to bear fruit. He wants us to be productive. He wants us to live according to his holy plan. And my friends, as we live every day, remember that the ultimate goal is to bear fruit. The ultimate goal is to tell somebody about a man named Jesus who gave his life on the cross for our sins. Our ultimate goal is to bear witness of the light that others will know that the light is shining in the midst of darkness. Let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. My friend, we must bear fruit, I tell you. We must let this world know who we are in the name of Jesus. We are children of God, saved by the grace of God, bought by the blood of Jesus the Christ. We must be true to God's purpose for our lives. And whatever God's purpose is for your life, if you need to live it and live it while you can let the dying world know that you are born of God that you are saved by the grace of God let a dying world know that you will stand for God anywhere at any time because God lives in your soul be fruitful my friends you must bear the fruit uh, that only God can give you you must let joy be in your heart you must live your life in such a way that God will get the glory out of your life do I have any witnesses here how many how many are striving to be what God wants you to be how many are striving to bear some fruit for the Lord in your life uh, my friends are we going to cope with the evil of this day and time we've got to live for the Lord and not for Satan we've got to be wheat and not tear 
we got to live for God according to his holy plan for our lives. My friend, we can cope with this evil if we only remember that we must be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We must be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We must put on the whole arm of God that we can stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. My friend, we can stand if we just, if we just stand. We can stand if we trust God to stand. We can stand if we put our hope in God. We can stand if we obey the word of God. We can stand if we have brothers and sisters praying for us. We can stand if we're praying for our brothers and our sisters. We can stand and we look to the hills from which cometh our help. For our help comes from the Lord that made the heavens and made the earth. Not only that, my friend, but if we are going as believers to cope with the evil as of this world as we strive to do God's will, we must not only remember to be aware of the presence of evil, not only remember that we must be true to God's purpose for us, but we must also be convinced, totally convinced that we are victorious in Christ. That we are victorious in Christ. That we are victorious in Christ. Some, sometimes, sometimes, some, sometimes, uh, sometimes some church members kind of kind of tickle me. I'm talking about just church members in general. Sometimes they tickle me. They all talking about trying to get the anointing. And we already got the anointing. Now you can get a fresh anointing. But if you're a child of God, you already got an anointing. Amen. Talking about, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. The Holy Ghost is already down here. The Holy Ghost is living in your heart and in your life if you're saved. Amen, somebody. We got to understand who we are and where we stand with God. God has already empowered the church. That is you and me. We're already empowered to do, to do God's work. You, you, don't have to, you don't have to worry about having fear getting in the way of you doing God's work. God has already empowered you to do God's work. Amen. You know what? The fear is from Satan. It, that's not from God. That's from Satan. That's from Satan. And we got to understand, my friends, that God has already empowered the church. Go back, if you will, uh, to, the, to, the, to the book of Acts and remember that when the Holy Ghost came down upon the church, that was the Holy Ghost that was to empower the church to go forth and do the will and the work of Almighty God. No wonder Peter could preach and 3,000 were saved. No wonder Peter could preach and 5,000 were saved. You know why? Because he had been empowered by the Holy Spirit. No wonder those who went forth as believers could go together and study the word of God, fellowshipping with each other, breaking bread together, enjoying the presence of one another. Why? Because uh, the Holy Spirit had already empowered the church. Uh, my friends, I thank God uh, for his power. Do you thank God for his power? He gives us what we need uh, that we might live for him uh, every day of our lives. And I'm so glad this morning that the power of God reigns right now. He gives us power that we can be convinced uh, that there is victory in Jesus Christ. Uh, if you love him uh, and if you know him for yourself, I declare he will make a way some how won't he do it church uh, he will open doors that no man is able to close uh, if you trust him uh, and never doubt him uh, he will surely bring you out uh, won't he do it church uh, you may be struggling today with some kind of malady in your life uh, put your hand in God's hand for he's able to give you the victory because you already have the victory I love that hymn that says victory is in Jesus uh, my savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his own precious blood do you know anything about that don't you know that you are redeemed don't you know that you have the victory in the lord jesus christ hallelujah somebody you've got the victory and because you got the victory you can tell a dying world that god is able to make a way out of no way we've got the victory because jesus died he died he died on Calvary, but early, but early, but early, but early Sunday morning, he got up, yeah, he got up, yeah, 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 yeah,
Amen. Anything that God wants you to do, he has already given you the power to do it. You got to trust it. Believe in it. And know that your victory is in Jesus. Now, if you don't know Jesus, you ain't got no victory. You don't have any victory if you don't know Jesus. But if you know Jesus, the victory is yours. It's yours. I want to say to you this morning, claim it. Claim the victory. Take that victory. Claim that power. Take that power and make it active in your life. And live for the Lord every day. Live for the Lord every day. If you live for the Lord every day, you know what? Every round will get better and better. Every round will go higher and higher if you live for him every day. We got to have the victory, church. We have the victory. We don't have to sit down. We don't have to sit down and look all sad and beat up. We have Jesus. We have Jesus. And I hope and pray that means something to somebody to have Jesus in your life. Now, if you don't have Jesus, you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you got Jesus, you can stand against the wiles of the devil. If you got Jesus, you can tell the devil to leave you alone. If you got Jesus, you can overcome anything in your life. If you got Jesus, you've got the victory. You got the victory. The victory is yours. It's yours. It is yours. It is yours. It is yours. It is yours. I declare it's yours. Some people, some people, every time you see them, they moan and complain about something all the time. Hey Amen. Every time you see them, it's my back, it's my knee. It's my high blood pressure. Now I'm not saying people are not going to have that stuff. But I'm saying at some point, what God is doing for you in your life ought to overpower your diabetes. Amen, somebody. You ought to have something good to tell somebody that the Lord is doing in your life. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, you ought to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. You ought to tell somebody how he brought you from a mighty long ways. You ought to tell somebody. You ought to tell somebody. How you save your soul from a burning hell. You're going to tell somebody that he's my savior. He's my all and my all.